Today's topic is secrets in the lake sediment. From this lake, to be exact. It looks like any other lake, but we're talking about sediments, so it's what's at the bottom of the lake that matters, right? Correct. Thanks to an almost miraculous combination of conditions, a rare and valuable type of sediment sits on the bottom of this lake. What kind of sediment? Let's find out. In the middle of Lake Suigetsu in Fukui Prefecture, a mysterious tower rises above the water. Three men are hauling something up from the lake. There doesn't seem to be anything down there. What are these three up to? Underwater exploration. They have been doing survey work here on the lake for a month and a half. Just under 20 centimeters. So 35.8. Finally, the object of their search appears. What comes up is a fat metal column. And inside it, just regular old mud? Is this really what they were looking for? The researchers themselves certainly look excited. In fact, they have been coming to explore this lake for the past 10 years. So what exactly is the significance of this mud? This is the world's longest, or at the very least one of the longest, continuous, well-preserved varved sediments. Varves are annual sediment layers. Now we can tell that at this time, a very large earthquake occurred in the vicinity of Lake Suigetsu. It happened 38,213 years ago, plus or minus 84 years. How can scientists learn so much from mud? He said 38,213 years. How can he be so exact? Well, the sediments from this lake are different from those of a typical lake. Different in what way? Let's zoom in on the cross section of the sample. It looks a bit like a layer cake. There are about seven years worth of layers just within a five millimeter sample. That's due mainly to Japan's seasons. This lake is 34 meters deep. Let's see what happens to it over the course of a year. First, spring. Those are the remains of dead plankton. Plankton grow on the lake surface, then die and fall to the bottom. Now, the June rainy season. This is fine soil washed down by the rains. It accumulates on the bottom. Now, fall, it looks like fallen leaves. That makes sense. And then winter, the temperature of the lake water drops. That is the iron which has dissolved in the lake water. When the temperature of the lake drops, the iron reacts with oxygen and forms particles that fall and collect on the lake bed. As this cycle is repeated year after year, these layers form regularly like growth rings. Sediments like this are called varves, and each band represents one year. Varves form because of the changing seasons then? Right, and the varves of this particular lake are very valuable treasure. A treasure? Yes, for example, here's when an earthquake took place. At that time, the deposits of sand increased, so the layer is thicker. Counting up from that layer tells us when the earthquake occurred. In other words, the valve layers from the lake bed form a very accurate measuring stick of chronology. And how many layers are there? The valve is 45 meters thick, which adds up to 70,000 years. Wow, that many! It's incredible! 
the valves of Lake Suigetsu are actually rewriting history. But before we explain the secret behind that, take a look at this. This is the oldest pottery fragment found in Japan. It was made at the beginning of Japan's prehistoric Jomon period. But how can just a fragment of pottery like this be accurately dated? There is actually an amazing method for it. This method was invented by American chemist Willard Libby. He received the 1960 Nobel Prize in Chemistry for his work. The technique makes use of an atom called carbon-14. Carbon-14 is present in the Earth's atmosphere at a fixed concentration. As a result, all living things on Earth, plants and animals and every other organism, has the same ratio of carbon-14. But once an organism dies, the carbon-14 begins to diminish at a rate which causes the quantity remaining to fall by half every 5,730 years. Which means... If the carbon-14 is measured and only half remains, the organism died 5,730 years ago. If only a quarter of the carbon-14 remains, it died twice as long ago, 11,460 years. In other words, the amount of carbon-14 remaining allows us to calculate the date of the organic remains. So how did scientists date that pottery fragment? By using the black powder sticking to the inside. This is actually the charring left when people cooked seeds and grains in the pot in ancient times. When its carbon-14 content is analyzed, it turns out that the pot can be dated to 16,900 years ago. So the concentration of carbon-14 is the same all over the world. And by measuring how much the concentration has decreased, you can date an artifact. Right. But there is a problem. The concentration of carbon-14 present on Earth varies slightly over time. So errors of hundreds of years creep in. That seems like a big margin of error. Now, here is what's amazing about valves. Let's say that by counting the valve layers, the leaf we saw on the video can be dated back to 20,000 years ago. Then, the leaf's carbon-14 is measured, and the result is 0.1. That means that something that currently has 0.1 carbon-14 is from 20,000 years ago. And that number is error-free. So if another object has a carbon-14 content of 0.1, it must also be 20,000 years old. That's right. Valves of Lake Suigetsu provide a calibration scale to correct carbon-14 measurements. Here is the oldest known fragment of Japanese pottery. It was considered to be 16,900 years old, but now, it has been re-evaluated by experts based on the valves from Lake Suigetsu. And they have dated it to about 16,652 years ago. Really? That's a 250-year difference, more or less. And although that number has not been finally confirmed, if it is, they will likely have to rewrite textbooks. There are no errors in valve dating? There are. For example, a year of unusual weather can cause the layers in that year to look different. The layers are not exactly the same every year. That's why they are hand-counted by experts, and they have been able to shrink the error down to plus or minus 30 years or so per 10,000 years. It's impressive that we can know within just 30 years when something happened 10,000 years ago. Yes, it is. But that is not the only radical new information to come from the valves of Lake Suigetsu. Let's watch. 
Takeshi Nakagawa of Newcastle University is a leading researcher on VARs. It was Nakagawa's team who calculated that the VARs from Lake Suigetsu go back 70,000 years. But what Nakagawa is most interested in at the moment is pollen. Pollen can be identified as coming from warm climate Japanese beech or cold climate Japanese white birch, or more than 100 other kinds of pollen contained in the VARs. Nakagawa has been counting this pollen for the last 10 years. When I'd counted 700,000 grains of pollen, I thought of the millions of people in Tokyo and how I was still nowhere near done. So Nakagawa developed a special keyboard that he uses for pollen counting. It reduces the effort and speeds up the process. I can go twice as fast, actually. Nakagawa is so fascinated by pollen because it can reveal the history of climate change on Earth. Ice cores from Greenland have been the scale widely used for climate change until now. Examining their cross-sections reveals striped layers like those of a var. From the thickness and composition of the ice, the average temperature of the year can be deducted. This graph, for example, shows a 5,000-year period starting 16,000 years ago. Look at this area. The average temperature rose 5 degrees in just three years. Scientists thought this meant the Earth's environment had undergone violent change and sudden warming. But in fact, when Nakagawa investigated the pollen in the varves from Lake Suigetsu, he made a major discovery that overturned the prevailing theory. At first, I was worried because the result was at odds with accepted thinking. My first thought was that I'd made a mistake. What did Nakagawa discover? What did he discover? Look here at these two graphs. The upper one shows climate change based on ice cores from Greenland. The lower graphs is derived from Lake Suigetsu pollen studies by Nakagawa. I see. The Greenland graph shows a sharp rise, but there's no dramatic change on the Lake Suigetsu graph. That's right. Comparison with the Lake Suigetsu data have revealed that climate change that was thought to have been global didn't always occur simultaneously worldwide. That's interesting, but how can you detect climate change from pollen? Different plant species living within the one environment respond differently to climate change. Which plants thrive or struggle corresponds closely to climate on a yearly basis. There are plants that respond to air temperature, plants that respond to rainfall, plants that respond to snow accumulation. By counting the different kinds of plant pollens, this can be measured. It's incredible to think that we can learn so much about the past just from counting pollen. And it's also amazing to think that the record from Lake Sugetsu's varves has been uninterrupted for the last 70,000 years on Earth. That's right. It took several miracles for this record to be preserved so well, distinguishing it from almost any other location on Earth. One factor was that Lake Suigetsu is not connected to any rivers or the sea, so it does not accumulate silt. The second factor is that the lake is low in oxygen, so almost nothing can live in it. That means nothing to disturb the sediments. The third factor is that it is unlike most lakes where the accumulation of sediment over tens of thousands of years would raise the lake bottom enough to turn it into dry land. Lake Suigetsu is actually sinking at 0.7 millimeters per year due to a nearby fault. So the lake never gets shallower, no matter how much sediment is laid down. I never knew such a miraculous place existed in Japan. 
And the fact that Dr. Nakagawa came to study Lake Sugetsu could be the fourth miracle. He is so dedicated. Actually, Nakagawa is the third generation of researcher to work on using Lake Suigetsu for calibrating geochronology. Studies of Lake Suigetsu are ongoing. They may make more discoveries there that require the textbooks to be rewritten all over again.